<laughs> thanks for your patience. My name is Anthony Bresnikan, I'm a film lawyer at Vanity Fair, and uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks for staying through the credits and uh, and, and gathering together. There's, there's nothing like a, a cold, burning night in Los Angeles. Uh, the rain is falling, but we're all shoveled in together and warm like in a really epic movie. So thanks for being here, and uh, let me bring out our panel of guests. Right now, uh, beginning with the director of the film, Chad Stahelski. The supervisor of Sound of Mark Stephenson. Cinematographer, Dan Lawson. And producer, Eric Lee. Hi. How many bathroom breaks? Yeah, we'll take five. Yeah. <laughs> I want to talk to you all about the uh, it's sort of the question just for all of you, and that's the uh, obviously there are some seriously thrilling fights. There's action. There's violence. But I, the thing that strikes me about this film is the way uh, in the fourth chapter you've really expanded this world in a way that's so operatic. And uh, I love the formality to it all. We live in such a casual culture that the, uh, the rules and the rigidity and the, uh, the manners of this world that these disasters inhabit is uh, there's just something kind of so charming about it, even though they are. Uh, the brutal kill was in terms of making weaker to start by how he pushed the boundaries of that in this film or Um well, okay. Uh I guess I've always enjoyed I think the whole team, we always like be like a dance previous with Marsh through this word. We all have a and Keanu especially no have affiliation for action films, especially epic. Like you can see the references of ones of Arabia to the to Wong Kar Wai stuff, um, Thanos, Akira Kurosawa stuff. Um, we've always looked at John Wayne's like well better see films that we grew up with, we did Eli. Well. And from the films from the seventies, they are coming for you, Sam Ryan, Chimbal, Lijan. Um, we like the etiquette, we like that coming of honor, we just like flipping it on its head. Derek Colson who wrote the original one, um, he was super low that John Wick is his damn brother's name, so that's what we make the man in the show. Um but their grandfather, when we were very similar grandfathers and had this very classy kind of etiquette, and they knew exactly how to toast and what jacket to wear again. And, and I think Derek kind of put that into the DNA of the very first wig. And if you've ever met Keanu, you know, he, he has a on that and so it just kind of fit. And we loved it so much that we just kind of kept that, that 70s action line, that, that honor code, Western Don Ford kind of ceremony. And uh, I guess that Sam like semi colleague R and kind of it, in, in, in and without the film is we kind of use that as our main thread. We kind of build the world off that. Like the assassins, where we get the coins and the, the marker and the whole you can't mess with people on the, the country of the grounds. And we just thought, you know, where a lot of action movies were going to chaos, we were more order. And we kind of always use that as, as sort of thing. I think you're right. But for Bob Miller, right. for King to live outside the law, you must be honest. Like that there's like a. Yeah, though as you already can. But like, and to answer your question too, so after number one, we had a strip for them that I made the movie that we thought, and we're like, uh-oh, they want to see you from the one in the middle. We got our fingers and stuck out of here. That's where I met Dan, and uh, I think we're, I just seen Crimson Cheek. And the fans, I was a big fan. Danny didn't probably go to the wall, this really, but he has having the scene, it's really cool. And John Wayne Bash and Bill Marshall, right, from Mark DeCosta, um, that I love. And we're like, okay, you gotta make this thing bigger. So to answer your question, at number four, we went to Mark to Dan, to Erica, to Kevin Caldock, Russian designer, and to our, our massive stun team. And we got a one side idea a little bit better. Like when I can title bigger, or want to blow more stuff up, it was going to be how do we dive into the world more? How do we make it even better? Because it's lighting and the sound and the music. We wanted one of the old box of this one, so that oh, we got to probably the DJ. Let's do it like Walker shots the boy, even though nothing. And so I'm getting really hops. I think everybody came one to salute because now you kind of you got the flavor of what a John Wick film is, and all the apartment hit is kind of like Dan's like we got to change the colors up. You going to be like put one of these and you got to buff up the sound story. Everybody came with a lot more uh, the suggestions. I was like, 
So I think if everyone does an Asian war and good work and in field theater, but it's kind of how we have capturing. What, uh, Mark, what would you say were some of the uh, sound elements that you contributed that, that added to this Byzantine world? Uh, are, are there things playing below the surface that, that, uh, that may, on a first viewing, uh, elude detection, but it's actually uh, conjuring an emotion in the viewer, things that are hearing, things that are just air with it? <laughs> Then you everything. Know, best meet up, actually. Um, I mean, ultimately, everybody sees John Wick movies as an action film on the surface. Before you get into the detail, on the surface, on there's no one guns and fights and cars. But there's a lot of subtext to John Wick, and a lot of that comes through the sound. Um, Chad always is encouraged, encourages it. We're enthusiastic about plenty of new ways to add it. And uh, you know, a couple little examples is in the uh, glass room fight with uh, with Kane and Wick when they first really match off, is that it's like slow down Brutus' chance to kind of reverse water reverb on it. To kind of, it's got to be silent at the same time. We need something to bed silence into, and so uh, that seems to be an effective way to do it. Can take cues for what you see in the scene. The first just nonsense and then for. Chum can name like what exactly um, you know, Asian, uh, the samurai, and, and um, martial arts. So it really was an idea to know with that. And then, of course, you get into see the old blind Sapson. What does he do? He has sound to him, so the movie. Can't take credit for that in sound. He's, that was what Chad wrote into the script. And it was all orchestrating by Nathan, the picture editor. But also, you need to find that right sound that really sells that moment that just is uh, something that it makes sense that the characters are reacting to, but it also jumps the audience a little bit too. So, how did you settle on the uh, very traditional sounding doorbell ding on for his uh, <laughs> for his kitchen uh, his kitchen wood truck? Uh, yeah, that was up. No, I say it, it was a real thing. We, we kept coming out along the everybody knows Atu All right, cool. Like a red crowd. Yeah, we the wildest thing where we get all our, our stuff. We're working with our sun chi land, uh, sun chi, and that's uh, in China, sun chi, and so many are, you know, three or four days in the sun, quite a lot of continues. And Sunny Son, a good, good friend of that was part of my 87 run, and say, in one day, I was like, hey, I know, I have a blind grandma, and well, she always listens for going up, she always walks on one, and you don't think, I thought, no, so we went and watched, we'll be quite out the idea. Um, my son boy went to style and I don't think. It's a friendly Yeah, but all these sound to be really simple. I went on, I mean, he's very well some sounds that were really kind of like complex or slight, like, or we tried everything. Technical to other part. Yeah, but the, both the simplest sound is the most effective sound I give out. So, so Dan, what can you tell me about the, uh, the lighting, the visuals, and setting that tone uh, and in terms of the way it creates this atmosphere of a. Uh, I can. A very long standing and and rich in culture. I, I, I was struck by the Mar Marquis office and uh, what we see the, uh, the continental blow up early in the film and the, the light coming in its sunset. It's uh, and then the movie ends with sunrise. Uh, what was the uh, the tone and the feel we were trying to accomplish uh, uh, with the way you uh, lit these seats? In the little <clears throat> when jets. I mean, it's all about Jolie Four and we, you know, Jolie Two was great, you know, Three was, you were in, and Four was like, we have some push to everything. And the channel, we like this, you know, the South and Light is always English to a lot in. What? Thanks, you know. So we talked a lot about the car, but if you watch the go, we watch the go, brighter cars, you know, stronger cars, and more contrasting colors as well. And we talked a lot about the lights should move, a lot of the seats in the movie, but the light is actually moving. Um, and we try to do that through the movie, and of course, in in that scene you're talking about, this is how I see this, but of course, that's as you feel some as be light hanging out there. Um, and that's like a lot of pressure can stop about building chance out there and to call the daylight away. And, but there was like, we, had, we have a very clear ideas about what we want to do. His version will uh, rather understand the order tell me what should, he should be in some set or sunrise. Um, and of course, that's a night in the color, but it goes, it's his character. 
but the rest of the character had their own cars and again we when the light is going off in the in the hotel lobby the light is moving a little bit because you want to have this feeling of ice should not be safe anywhere and the same in the glass sea place you have talked about before the light is moving a lot as well because it should be not a safe place so we just try to put it into like a little bit unstable situation all the way through and i think it works pretty good chat then did you what program will look on this what will the light be happening there was there was the was lower the problem lower the lights well if you guys ever watch a kurosawa film he's always got something going on whether it's wind the the, the showers are moving or he's got snow rain heat he's always got an element so we thought well we're inside we didn't love the carpet so we're like oh Jesus. and they were like well we'll just move the light we'll always have a sense of disturbing or, or uneasiness for the light so dan made these nasa braids so every scene is always lighted a little tricky to edit too it's like a yeah, editor age. Um, but it always gave a sense of motion. So when you do in a two hour and three, five minute movie, sorry, it's a minute, two hour and thirty eight and it was um and you have so much action, you have but scenes that are always meeting, it's always good to have some kind of motion and not just that change in the color color of the scene, but also change in how I during this here. Um, that was a brief to be to Dan. That's why you see the waterfalls and new ones and that, the cut and all the things, the sunrise is always changing. Yeah. It seems easy, but like when you're doing the scene through the dialogue, it's turning the lights almost to the beat of the rhythm. It, it's, it's pretty impressive to watch his lighting films. The, the sunsets of the sunrise is too, they right? increase to like a fiery light. And I, I think with closing line of the film and is he in Heaven or Hell. And uh, I wonder if, if there's like an inferno aspect to that type of light. But, but, uh, that you blame that. Why do people to, to pick up on that subconscious level? Well, really, you know, the end sequence that you're in Sucker Cliff, you know, that's like these two beings in the future, no, no one knows what's going to happen there, but you know, so otherwise it's a powerful thing. And it's maybe dying, maybe it's going back, but the, it's a very positive, positive thing, I think. But well, you have to talk to chat about this. <laughs> yeah, but you know, when the movie is quoting Don Bear, the light, the light, the light, the light. When you see Chapman in the Mako area and the board, in the background, there's a big image of Janice, the guy that you're getting an ending suit. Oh, two breaks, thing. Yeah, two based on So we're big in Greek mythology, so in Greek mythology, sunlight is the city when it made ending, but if they die up or something, so we kind of try to hide in the hidden issues, so it's kind of sunlight. Is. I know we always shoot a lot of people now. I'm kind of perfect. You were. On all these films, and uh, I would need to talk about the uh, expanding that world. Uh, the, the the universe is ever growing. Try Ruby coming out, Alrena, you got Continental series. That um, what was it? The challenge as a producer in terms of making this world feel as vast as it does, so that it, it feels firmly at home on the main Yeah, I mean, look, the the movie the. We're not based on any IP, so I we were all making down two and down three, down four. It's always like a gift and a curse, right? It's like, oh my gosh, what are we gonna do? Not only to sort of top the last one, but also there's nothing to sort of, you know, we're just sort of like making it up as we go along to a degree. Um, and so each time we make a movie, we kind of like, I think, burn the house down and then I'll hate each other and need a break and then sort of like come back to it a few months later. I'm like, all right, like, you know, we're a family. We love we love making movies and telling stories. And each movie just sort of like tips the surface of the mythology, right? And it's like um, they're long, but we just kind of like what is the content? So what's behind the doors? Where did Bowery King come from? I mean, we set up all of these characters and don't really pay off a lot of it. So there's an evangelical sex for it. So there's so much to tell. We're always excited to sort of get back to it. I mean, you know, the challenge of Don Look Four. I mean. As a producer, there are challenges, but also like, you know, the movies get bigger, the bodies get bigger, which is exciting um, and present its own challenges, but also present a lot of opportunities. So I think on Swole, we were excited to go international. That was like our big thing. I mean, we had done Rome, we had done Morocco as like addendums to sort of like the New York stories on two and three. But this one was really the whole, you know, the first time we were sort of like leading New York. Um, and expanding the palette. So it was like, well, where are we going? Is it Japan, Japan, Paris? Or like, what are we doing? Um, so those are sort of ideas early on that really pushed the movie to 
you know, at sort of whole another level. Um, and within that, I mean, look, the canon is really, is what we make it, um, which is fun and, and daunting also. And so, yeah, we're, we're doing spinoffs and, um, telling other stories and I think it's, it's been really fun. A lot more to do though. It, it seemed like it, in expanding, uh, internationally going global with John Wick, that, that you also selected backdrops that themselves seem to have, even though we don't know it what necessarily what it is, they all seem to have their own kind of history that can say, where does that door go? When well, it's in place, like the hotels themselves seem to have like a vast history. And I wondered if, if, uh, if you could talk about creating that atmosphere where the story can have the elderly don't grow in, in our minds, the, the concept has been around forever. And, you know, we like choosing cities that have deep, long historic roots, like Paris, like Morocco. Um, we, have sort of believed like the high table and the small that we've gone for ages before us. And I think, um, you know, the movies are typically rooted in, in mythology and the brief mythology and sort so that like lends into it. Um, and so that's a big part of, of like how we expand the story and where we go and, and why we do it. I think there's other, you know, I remember when Chad called and was like, you've read Shrope, there'll be a child like for what the ideas were. And he's like, I know if there's, there's a uh, Niger. I mean, there's Japan. I mean, Japan. Okay, we have a movie. This is totally like, like, it always works backwards. Like, what are the set pieces? What are the big ideas? Um, and so, Japan, obviously, like, the figurative in culture, and, um, you know, Chad's obviously a Shadow Samurai movie. So, like, sort of, we, 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 we take a nugget and kind of, like, build off of that. And that's a big part of, of how we do it. Chad, what do you think was the, the hardest? Thing that you set for Erica to do uh, as the producer on this movie was answering a call. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's always it's honestly there's never one thing. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people here know it. Whenever you try to build something, it takes a lot of people. It takes a lot of building hands. It takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of people being on the same page. It's had more on the trust to go out and reach. I mean, if, when you pitch ideas, if everyone saw the same to you and said yes, like they're not supposed to see it, they really, you're supposed to see some cake, you're supposed to iron, you're supposed to, you know, everybody to see what you see and they all be the same. So you kind of have to fight the jungle on a horse or a dog that bite crotches and <laughs> flying swords and, and, and lawns, but we're dealing with it. Yeah, so that is the hard part. Um, or like Lil Justin, right? I mean, Chad is, a, is you know, as a director, you're like, we're going to do 100 days and it's going to be all night. Shoes. Really? <laughs> like, if I eat in the days, it's not going to be nice. And just like, I'm so hard. Well, yes. Yeah. And you're like, oh, nice. oh, oh, okay. Like, there are just things along the way. I mean, it, I mean, I, I make movies up. I've done it. Like, yeah, I eat the thing. Chop, 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 the darkness. We call him the dark lord. But it's like, he pushes you so hard. I mean, he doesn't want to hear now. So then, you know, from me or from anyone. So he like, it, it's truly pushed me to eat. The best version of myself and you know to do the best stuff possible to deliver for him and the movies but yes i mean you know pain is uh this glory for him so that's, for, that's john wick yeah i guess i can jump in a little bit too from what i've seen uh, talk volume talking about the sound but every department i've gotten to you know it's like a family after four years or four years i mean four funds and you get to know what other people do, and everybody's really passionate about the franchise and what you're doing they can to add to it. Jeff's great, the ultimate clearing house for all that. But everybody wants to bring as much as they can. So I think you get all these intriguing factors that you really end up making the film in the city. Yeah, and you know, you can clearly see Jen's not saying, saying, you know, if seen, you know, if it's like, we have to go on the way, and that's what we do. And of course, like this couple of days of rice will just pay for it. But when you see the movie, it's like worth it. Um, and those kind of set setups we have. Uh, so it's like, you watch a little bit over, so I mean, that's a fantastic thing. It's like, very, very nice to be in those shows, yes. For most, I mean, it's true, like, we, you, Sons is no different than doing a big musical. Like, you have to have live performances, you have to set up as a beat, as a rhythm. You can't just, uh, we, we try not and intend. You could put 10 cameras out and shoot other things and figure out a post, but when you're dealing with so many cars and animals and camera and you want them to look good and you want to keep it in static, it, it takes a level of rehearsal that most of only go through because that's your Saturday issue, your Sunday issue, your nighttime, your day issue, you know, you're not seeing. Um, but it starts with Keon and the guy's an amazing, I mean, the biggest what torture with me. 
and he needs to pack three, so then we have 100 son of men and 100 drivers at 100 airs. And then, like, we just spent a lot more time in rehearsals and probably in, in, in development than most people. I, I think you, you really do in like, there at this point. I think I spend twice as much in prep as most directors. But I believe in rehearsals, I believe in that satanic to try things, to experiment, to figure out what concepts you got worth. So that when you are the setting, if we have to get 20 or 30 setups a day, we have time for that little, like Dan and I have lit, we've lit a set, walked on and gone, yeah, yeah now this, why is this shit he's sick? And we've literally had a relight and we've done martial art choreography that we spent five months doing. And we'll get there, we'll get on the stairs and like, you just can't build 220 stairs in a sound stage. So you, you have to take your guess. So you get there and you realize, oh, it's rainy. And uh, they're on the slip on stairs, apparently. Um, <laughs> so it's so the actors. <laughs> so you're like, okay, how do we do this? So we've changed that, that stereophony. That was choreographed on the day as we were going. You have to keep relighting and going through the refrain. You want to the, the exorcist vibe or going up and down. So to keep fighting that, um, really, we're putting it together. So it's only just to have a crew and have the cast that can, can rehearse that much and still change this, it's incredibly rare. I mean, that's our little secret. Is that what mythology inspiration? I thought of Sisyphus, y'all. That's, so the whole point was we scour like, okay, the whole, we used to joke about Sisyphus the whole time. It's been push a lot, go for it. And we see how the sacred cure. I, I'm a big fan of Amelie. That's what we it's, <laughs> So we ended up looking down the stairs. We were scouting, you know, with Mary around and went all the way on top of it down the stairs. And I was with Scott Rogers and it's like, where did it end? Like, oh yeah, somebody's going now. this. <laughs> we're like, okay, honest. <laughs> and came on the side of lap, and like, so we built a little sequence around the whole myth of Sisyphus. Mm. Well, well, Mark and Dan, tell me about uh, something in, in your particular uh, field on this film that you felt pushed your boundaries. I was eight on me full. Those are the ones for playing with one seat or one side. Uh, 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 I think we were off each other's arms like that. The nightclub was weird, 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 you know, it was like. Waterfalls and and a lot of people that you use like instead of I think the most shadows was actually the final sequence or the chop of the cycle occurred because there had to be a solo scene and the only way you could control that was to shoot that and I as well. So we built some pretty serious line works up there and we have some you know some big big lights. We put on the list and just actually moved that up physically so it looks like it was the sunrise. And there's some things, you know, you cannot pre light like, you cannot rehearse, you so you just have to hope for the best. Uh, and it worked pretty well, and of course, it starts to rain when we were up there. We have a lot of issues for that scene, but I would say that was the biggest, my, the biggest problem we have. I, it, it's, it's really yeah, quite painful. They got the all location. Yeah, yeah that, was was, that was really a sad case. Sir. Something that assumes that would be the visual effects on it because it would be so yeah. hard to create. You can ask the church, they're pretty happy that it's done the center. Good night, extension. Yeah, that yeah. uh, yeah, was all in location. Uh, Why, how are you always to do that uh, you did it? You know, was it innovative or surprised you or push your uh, your comfort zone? I was going to start with Dan's answer of John Ray Ford. <laughs> because in a way, it's, it's a two films. It's, it's two fills worth of ideas in one, and you just wanted to make it non repetitive, you wanted to keep it as interesting and evolutionary as possible. So, uh, I wouldn't say that there was one particular area, it was just the scope of the film, humanly, was a pretty big challenge on its own. But, you know, there's so many opportunities to lead into um, what is the undercurrent of John Wick, like I'm talking to a second crew at the end. You know, ultimately, I see it in many ways as the Western. So we play it down the Western with black powder guns and wind and crows and something I'm sure it doesn't really have in fun church. A lot of wind, a lot, a lot of bird trip. You know, no wow. But anyway, so it's to kind of give it a flavor, kind of give it something that's, um, you just got some personality. You know, you talk about some of the big vista sees where John's always walking, somebody's always walking, Winston walking in, in the Louvre, and the fact that we can take this beautiful space and just sell how large it is with footsteps, it just echoes throughout and having its own kind of weird little sound that kind of goes with it. In a way, it's kind of funny, but at the same time, it's, uh, it just makes it more of a medium wearing. 
That was where Ms. Mayad Nassian actually has walked through the museum. Just a bit of like, why you watch that? That was a director of Ingo Show. That is a classic show. Yeah. That, that was when they Well, Shed, how he did that? He goes, tell me. <laughs> yeah, they shut down the loot for us. The fan didn't have an open yet. Many in the area said, cheap cities. I was going to shoot every. Yeah. <laughs> but the first time the studio saw that, that shot, they called and said, Brad, the chat. I'll keep that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's uh, let's say some questions from the audience. You guys have some questions for our, our guests? Come on, ask away. All right, right here in the front. I'll repeat the question too because I don't care. I want to know on the fight scenes that when you photos that I mean you photos that on that. All in all, do do they really get hurt? <laughs> you know, there's so many people that you kill making a scene. <laughs> or they, like, it just photographed a certain way where it looks like they're painting them, but they don't. That is a good audience question. Uh, so, I get, I'll repeat it for the folks who might know. She's asking how, basically, how do you make it look so real without anybody getting actually hurt? There, most of the summit you see, which I want to say, some of the best martial art will fight some people in the business. It's just like dance. It's not like real martial arts. We choreograph pretty much like dancers. We spend time rehearsing, and the annuals help sell things. And we wear a special, like, it's small gel pack arbor so that it has to make real content. But when you do see a son getting hit by a car, they're really getting hit by a car because they're hit at it. Um, and there's safety mats that we digitally lace on the ground so they don't end up calling the stones. When you see the dog attacks, the dogs are really attacking guys. They're just wearing special armor. So the dogs don't get hurt, and the dogs are taught to do it, so it's like play. When you see stair falls, that's really um, a Keanu Sunter and Vincent. Um, he actually did that stair fall in one take. So mm -hmm. that's really, that's just very, very talented people. Do you guess who did that? He actually, he actually, he did it on the same The first take, he got stuck like three stairs down. Uh, and we're like, oh, bummer, be set. And then the second take, and nailed it. So I feel like what you mean to the body. Uh, you can see him at one point, he's like, I'm not stopping. I'm not making it down the bottom. I'm not doing this. A good question. Thank you very much. Yes, yeah, so up here in the middle. Uh, so, like, how many days does it take to shoot like the st the uh, stair fight? How many days on the session? How many did you plan for, and how many did it actually take? Oh, they don't. Those don't, 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 don't. That's a great question. <laughs> as far as like an action crew goes, and what that you don't understand, it, it all comes down to the lighting and the rehearsal about how we rehearsed in camera. The like, the fact that he can light, and we still get. Pointing the Finity setups today was pretty impressive. And we didn't think setups. So uh, I think we're seven days on the stairs. Was it nine? Yeah, it was not between the two we got laid out onto. That's what it was said. We were still We were still sitting there at the Saturday night. We were still, <laughs> we were still like, between, we, we had two weeks between the, the actual Sacrifice <laughs> duel and that. I think we went over rally of two days. But it was like it was about two weeks for everything the stairs and the duel. And all. I mean, some go way over and some go as mine. Try to keep like, it. It's kind of but that's why I like shooting on location. Sometimes I don't want to get nailed on, on the set, so you can try to keep it somewhat fluent. Like, we have to make the permit for it. Like, action is always tricky. Like, the arc to trial, I think we finished the arc. Yeah, but like Osaka, we, like, we, we have, have you know, our soccer, we went way over, but then we ended up moving scenes into it. You know, it's a, that's why you need to be a producer, you need to get live producer, you need to be, so you're always flowing with it. Flexible locations that take our writing and, yeah. and our money. <laughs> uh, uh, but again, let's take uh, another question. Anybody over here? Yeah, up there in the back, the we'll last room, the green deck. Yeah, uh, so, uh, you have you to say that, you know, you try to notice two things, uh, original, you just have to be on the scene floor. Uh, that's where you might, you know, if you do another one of these movies, you know, in Dax, they're very convenient movies. Uh, are you ever worried about right now of originality or doing for bad nature just because? Yeah. Of course. Of course. I, I don't think it's ever a worry or concern. I, I don't know. Like, I I was the kid that was always playing with Play Doh and bronze. I don't know. It's a whack. You have to just. Um, I don't know. It's about interest, I think. I never really thought about Like, we never really stress out about how do we. You know, we never have a study you at Lily the Dino, I don't know how to we just go, wouldn't this be cool if and it, it usually happened like um, during the strike that was just happening, me and a lot of my guys, we just went on like a world tour, we scattered a lot of locations, wrote a lot of ideas. Like I have a, a stunt training facility called eighty seven where all the we train cast where some of our best stunt guys train. We're in there every morning doing what we love, messing around, working out, and a lot of ideas come that way. But I I don't know, like we're 
when you deal with these guys and you have this kind of room, everyone's always got something going on. We work with great writing teams. We're, we're constantly in the mix, I guess. And I don't know, like, just like, I'm very visual. So when I read a book and kind of see things, like, you know, you read Tolkien, you can almost see your world. That's why it's amazing to see the films. I don't know, you look at stuff, like I look at this theater right now, and from the background, it's like, okay, if Keanu jumped out of that, like, you start PC. <laughs> um, and I guess when you deal with Dan, I, like, I, you know, just outside before we came in, Dan and I had dinner, we were just talking like, what, you know, why, why are so many movies, you know, crunched down now? Why is it so grim? Why can't, that, those are big riff when we started the British Down Whip, why can't actually be colorful? Why do they have to be, you know, crunched down and it's all grim and dreary and post apocalyptic? Like, yeah, let's do something with purple. You know, is that jump the shark? I don't know, but like, you shouldn't try. Like, you know, we get bored with ourselves, so you're constantly trying, so. And there's so much out there. I mean, it's a big world. <laughs> like, you know, if you told me I had to do a snowmobile chase tomorrow, I'd be like, oh. If you told me I had to do the biggest underwater sequence since Thunderball, I'd be like, cool, I'll figure it out. You know, and you, you just kind of challenge yourself like that. Like, I had never done post all the way through before until I directed John, like, even after 10 years of second into directing. And I ended up going into DI and learning about digital intermediate coding VMs. And I sound with Mark and you realize, oh my God, like sound is a whole nother toolbox. So that's why you hear the music, you hear all these female vocals throughout all the big spaces. It's like, oh, if I can play with these guys. <laughs> and like Mark's team is mixed and he's showing you how you, you can fade in and out, you can surround a sound and add this and do all these great little tricks. And when you go into DI with Dan, he's like, oh, you power window, you can make this look beautiful. Well, oh, don't do that. <laughs> but you, you learn what you can do, and that becomes a whole other experiment, uh, experimentation kind of thing and creativity. And when you have, like, I mean, if I get any hey, 20 of the best stunt guys in the world, and tell them, let's call up with some cool stuff, that's not a bad way. And it's always spend six days a week. So it's kind of, you know, this far, hey, and after. Was, I should over here. Yeah. yeah. And I was wondering, um, for the gunfire, how much of that is blanks and how much of it is just post you know, Ooh, two wow. yeah. Um in I mean sorry I don't speak out in time. I think in gentleman four, literally every gunshot is uh for people that done a uh, up until very, very recently, every firearm you see out of really said is an actual firearm, but it fires a blank round. A blank is a cartridge that has a powder in it, much less than a, a regular round, and no actual bullet. So a real flame comes out the barrel and boom, they'll sound. But a blank in close range is still lethal to where at least it can be caused great effect and concussive force. Um, and we want, that's why you don't see a lot of close quarter work prior to here leaves in the mountains. You have to be kept to the guy shoot that because it could hurt the sun guy or hurt the cast and some accidents that eventually help. Um, so we want to do a lot of close quarter work in John, in John Wick. So we actually went to the armor and said we can't do it the way it is. So we built clunk guns. It's an actual firearm that we take to a gunsmith and we plug the barrel with a steel rod so nothing can, nothing can uh, come out of the barrel. But the casing still ejects into a very small, small amount of grain in the middle, like 25 grams of gunpowder. So we still get the ejection, but nothing comes out. What we do is we go into, as some of the VFX people out, we'll go on the stage, we'll take elements and muzzle flashes, we'll have my rhythm, actual muzzle flashes, and we'll comp them together. So we put the, the fire next to the, the former and nothing hurts them. So the rules, the same thing, we'll do element, you could call it. We'll go against real green screen, we'll actually fire scripts off of blood, take those, and start comping them to the guides. So it's not, while well, not completely a digital flash or a digital blood hit, the blood sometimes is digital. But we take real effects and marry them together. So I think, and I'm going to say this, out of like the 2,000 something gun shops we put in, yeah. even the sounds, every, as trial of 2100, we're all either laid in with sound or digital. And that, so no real, no, no real firearms are used. <laughs> When you see the dragon's breath, that's a real round, but I'd be a little much for the Sun team. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say one more question. Yeah, you're there. I have a question. Seeing that you stole out the dog or the house. Yeah, the top shot. Did you send that to the title like this video game? It was, uh, yes, the answer is yes, since I uh, uh, told the story before. I, as a kid, I had an itch a sketch. Yeah, that was. Yeah, I used to love Etch and Sketch and Fourth of July. I mean, when Dan and I always talk about action sequences, again, when you have a two and a half hour movie, nothing like gunshots and action. You got to keep it changing. So we always think uh, we want to do something different. So you look at a horizontal plane, we want to do a vertical plane. And a lot of times, I come from the the, the action director world. Sometimes when you see a top shot, it's the height of the stunt doubles, and you want to get some kind of emotion. 
I get dance routines, do a lot of LA stuff from that way. And the problems are always the same. It's a little trickier to light because you only look in one way. And you're looking down into like the plain puppet. So we're like, if you do it, how do we make it something different? He said, Dan and I were talking to, to, to Kevin Cowder, I've actually had a million checkers fours, we put goals in it. And we're going to literally draw fireworks from the top down. And our, one of our chief armor instructors introduced me to the Dragon's Breath round. And we like, oh, it's going to be etch a sketch. So we literally got a piece of paper and we started drawing how we could make the lines happen. And then we just built the set accordingly and then lit it for the free lunch. There's more practicals in that scene than you can imagine. Every lamp, you know, is lit in a certain way. So you can still tell his cat, we'll put a bunch of big mirrors and so bounce light and see. And, but it was meant to be kind of like that video game. So like, you know, like, what was it? Uh, the Stilbert one. Oh. Uh, yeah, you did a little bit of a tone shot. I forget. But like, we're eight layer ones, so we're talking about them now. It was one of the earlier ones. Um, I had the little club in the words. Yeah, minority. What am I thinking? Right. Um, I've always liked that, but I always wanted to make it look pretty, I guess you'd say. So there's this video game. We saw, we already started developing it, and then um, a friend of mine is showing me Hong Kong Massacre. This is a very old game that did a lot of top shot stuff. And we're like, oh, cool, they got it. They were trying to do like Roman candles kind of thing in, in, a, in a vertical angle. We thought that was pretty inspiring. And again, you know, to the other gentleman's question, you're always trying to challenge yourself a little bit. So how do you want to see things? And our whole thing is how do you make, how do you make it beautiful? How do you make it pretty? So it's not just, you know, I, I guess raw action, you, you know. The John Wick world is a little pushed as it is. But I think by the fourth goal, we're like, ah, I think we've been, hey, we will. It was terrible. Excellent. Well, thank you all for uh, for the great questions. Thank you to our, our panel. Uh, thank you guys. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much.